Yes, we are being sued by Poppy Catering. But gentlemen, they are not caterers. They are whores. Whores my husband used. And charged on his gold card. Yes. But I'm sure I don't need to remind you that a contract entered into for an illegal act is void. In any case, I certainly do not intend to pay this bill. It's the principle of the thing. And what about the publicity? I had a little research done. The woman who is running Poppy Catering, this whorehouse, is a Winthrop. Laura Winthrop. Her mother is a Matthews. I went to Spence with her. Now, Laura is a very capable woman. She holds an MBA from Harvard. Imagine my husband paid $1,000 for four hours' service. It's almost as much as I'm paying my divorce lawyer. Got everything? Well set? We got our warrant. What else we need? Are you cracking when you don't sleep at night? Frank, I love this. Let's go bust the cross. Woo! This is a nice place, huh? <laughs> Police here to see Laura Winthrop. Search warrant. Laura Winthrop, you have the right to remain silent and refuse to answer questions. Do you understand? How does the defendant plead? Not guilty, Your Honor. I assume you're requesting bail. We are, Your Honor. Prosecution does not consider Miss Winthrop a flight risk, Your Honor. However, the 35-woman prostitution ring, which the defendant ran, is one of the largest and most lucrative of its kind uncovered in recent years. Listen up, Andrew, and get some pointers. <laughs> I gather this is alleged to be an efficiently run business. Thoroughly computerized, where the client list includes doctors, diplomats, CEOs of some of the city's largest corporations. Get to the point, Mr. Stone. Despite the impressive list of assets, Promoting prostitution is still merely a Class D felony. This office requests bail commensurate with the serious impact of the crime on the moral fiber of this community. You hear that, Andrew? Fiber! I told you we all need fiber. Ladies and gentlemen, I realize it's late, and all of us, including me, would rather be somewhere else. But since we are compelled to spend some time together, perhaps we could have a little order. Bail five thousand dollars. Very good. What just happened? No, not at all. Does it affect your catering? Yes, and they weren't even invited. And here I am at night court, my Counselor, you're treading water. My client invested in the catering business. She knew nothing about and had nothing to do with prostitution. The records we got in the bus give us a good start proving otherwise. Circumstantial, at best. There is such a book. See you in court. City. Mm. I can't imagine. <laughs> I only just found out I've got the AIDS virus. How many men did you have sexual intercourse with in the 18 months you worked for Miss Laura Winthrop? 800? Maybe a thousand? Am I missing something here? She's our witness. Watch. And during those 18 months, you worked solely for Miss Winthrop? Yes. Your witness. Miss Curtis, I'm sure that you're aware the incubation period for HIV can be up to 10 years. Yes. Miss Curtis, were you a virgin before you began your association with poppy escorts? Mm. A simple yes or no will suffice? No. No further questions. Redirect, Your Honor. Go ahead, Mr. Stone. Jolene. Before you went to work for Miss Winthrop, how many men had you slept with? Three. And to your knowledge, are they all healthy? Very healthy. The prosecution rests, Your Honor. Ms. Winthrop, are you concerned about the health of your employees? Yes, I'm 
quite concerned about the health of my girls. Along with regular checkups, I insist they carry medical insurance. And you urge them to seek psychotherapy, do you not? Yes, that's one of the reasons I insist they carry medical insurance. It pays for the therapy. We do encourage it. Thank you. Your witness, sir. Miss Winthrop, this insistence on health insurance and medical checkups, do you do this out of altruism? Let's say enlightened self-interest if my male guests were to pick up a bug. Miss Winthrop, do you consider AIDS a bug? AIDS is a very serious disease, Mr. Stone. That's why I don't want anyone in my little family infected. So you screen prospective employees, and if any of them tested positive... I wouldn't hire her. Uh, and they wouldn't be part of your little family. My little family was the best finishing school on the East Coast. Girls came to me without education, without wit, without class. I taught them how to speak, how to dress. And after a year, these naive young women learned sophistication. And for that, Miss Winthrop, shame on you. You act as though I don't care about them. Well, let's talk about that. Have you ever tried to help any of these girls, like the ones that you didn't hire? No. If they had ever tested positive for AIDS... They would have to stop working for me. And in the past three years, how many of your long-term employees have stopped working for you because they tested positive for AIDS? I'd say about a dozen. Have you tried to help any of them? No. Have you visited any of them? Have you? No. Do you even know what's happened to them? Try to find out? No. I've never tried to find out. Miss Winthrop, how much money do you make from your business in one year? In this past year? No. Oh. I really don't know. A hundred thousand? Probably. One million? I don't think so. Oh? I do think you do think so. I think that you made $1,672,000. At least that's what you stated on your New York State income tax return. And with all that money, you didn't help these girls once. And as for your customers, Miss Winthrop, have you ever tried to contact customers and warn them that they had slept with women who are HIV positive? No. Miss Winthrop, I can't hear you. Would you please speak up? No. So isn't it true, Miss Winthrop, that you are creating an atmosphere of reckless disregard for human life, which must inevitably lead to someone's death one way or another? <laughs>